Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Friday, May 1st. Yay, we made it to Friday, everybody. Hopefully you're enjoying this beautiful weather we have. We get another nice day of it. That's right. And then the heat kicks in. Justin is standing by with details as we head into the weekend. More fun uh, during the pandemic, this time out in beautiful San Luis Obispo, California. I think the last one we showed um, creative ways people are entertaining each other. It was putting those jokes on the trees in the neighborhood. Right. This one is my favorite so far. This, this is hilarious. This is a good one. Uh, Maureen and Aaron Salmon posted signs along a sidewalk in front of their Highland Drive home in San Luis Obispo that read, <laughs> you have video. now entered the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Silly Walks. Commence silly walking immediately. So they're capturing all of this on their security ring doorbell camera stuff. And so people are doing it when they see the signs. So they do cartwheels. They walk funny. They walk slow. So they took this and they posted it on social media and then people have just gone crazy about it. They even capture their postal worker <laughs> getting into the spirit. <laughs> they were inspired by a family in Michigan that came up with the idea of paying tribute to the famous Monty Python skit featuring John Cleese, the Ministry of Silly Walks, which is an absolute comedy classic. I love it. So they said it brings so much joy and silliness, especially in this time. It helps to interact and see other people. And of course, at a safe distance. It's fun to hear when our windows are open, people giggling and laughing and planning out their moves. It's uplifting. That person walking their dog, that was very John Cleese, the way that they were going. Uh, Maureen says she's seen couples ballroom dancing and little kids doing cartwheels down the sidewalk. They have all kinds of different ones. I like to just watch them. Look at them. That's the one I was talking about. <laughs> yes. They even suspect people have been coming from other neighborhoods to seek out the silly walking. I think we should all do this in our neighborhood. Every neighborhood should have a silly walks street. Don't I agree. Think? Maureen says they plan to keep up the silly walk zone for a couple more weeks, but yeah, I say why not keep it up all summer? California is a beautiful place to be walking around anyway. And just keep posting. That is fabulousness totally. The That's silly cool. walking zone. <laughs> Let's take a look at your rundown. In Texas, dine-in service resuming today, but with some requirements, disposable menus, condiments only by request, and no buffets. In all, 32 states will have eased some restrictions by the end of next week. The deadly coronavirus outbreak at a California prison. Officials say four inmates have now died at Terminal Island Prison, and 600 more inmates have tested positive. There's a chance the U.S. will have a COVID-19 vaccine by January. That's an assumption that it's going to be safe, that it's going to be effective, and that we're going to be able to do it quickly. A difficult day for millions of out-of-work Americans. It's been scary. For many, May 1st marks the second new month without a paycheck. HEB now putting limits on the amount of meat you can buy. It's a response to meatpacking plants around the country closing due to the virus. You can only buy one package of ground beef or you can buy two packages of chicken, pork, turkey, or regular beef. The FDA has approved a new ventilator developed by NASA. The space agency says the machine called Vital can be built faster than traditional ventilators. That is Adam Lambert with a new version of Queen's classic hit, You Are the Champions, pays tribute to frontline medical workers. Office star Rain Wilson hosted a Zoom meeting for pets and their owners Thursday afternoon. More than 900 pets and their owners took part in the call. Wiley High School principal Verity Montgomery has visited every high school senior at home. It took him two weeks. He covered 800 miles visiting all those students. Bravo. Yeah. A town in Sweden has spread chicken manure mm. all over the grass in the town park to stop picnics and partying. Hmm. Okay. I smell a vision because I can smell it from here. <laughs> well, well, that'll work. Well, that's one way to keep the crowds that's, away. Uh, yeah, that's chicken poop all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> you really? Said chicken poop on television. <laughs> yeah, I did. Because that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It yeah. stinks, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what all I hear. Right, let's take you outside with live cam. Can you feel the Friday vibe in here? <laughs> what a transition. Uh, yeah, you gotta say chicken poop because chicken manure just sounds weird. Yeah, Doesn't chicken sound poop right. sounds so much better. <laughs> oh, let's talk about the beautiful weather outside. <laughs> We've got uh, great temperatures right now. 69 degrees at the airport, 67 in Kerrville, 68 right now in Rock Springs. We got clear skies. There is a little bit of cloud cover out to the west, and some of that may move in today. Not a big deal. Uh, Mark talked about the heat cranking up. It will. 93 tomorrow, 94 on Sunday. 
We are going to start to see some morning clouds and more humidity, so I should warn you there. We may start to talk about the heat index a little bit as we get into the weekend and next week. Temperatures at this hour, as we mentioned, in the 60s for the most part here locally. 68 to Vine, 64 right now in Tarpley. And a real quick note, Palm Count is not in yet. Once it comes in, I'll let you know. Uh, we're hoping for good numbers today, uh, but up around 90 this afternoon. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. It will be a little bit breezy. And uh, we're going to take a look at some severe weather statistics and see where we stand there coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, sir. Transkyd, if you're noticing a few more cars on the highway, you're not the only ones. Texas has started to reopen today, and we are seeing a little bit more traffic just depending on where you are around the San Antonio metropolitan area. Drive safely throughout the day and the weekend. Top stories that we're following for you today, an update on an Amber Alert that we brought you as late breaking news this morning on GMSA. Bear County Sheriff's Office says the little girl has been found and is safe. The Amber Alert earlier for two-year-old Aurora Lee was Lopez was issued around 630 this morning. Deputies were looking for 40 miles Sherry Lee McGill in connection to the girl's disappearance. Department of Public Safety troopers spotted the woman's vehicle on I-35 in McLennan County. That's up around Waco around 830 this morning. Troopers conducted a traffic stop. They were able to take the little girl into custody. Right now, BCSO deputies are working to reunite her with her family. No word on if McGill will be facing any charges. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers looking for the two men responsible for shooting at a home on the far west side. The two suspects were caught on camera holding guns and partially covering their faces. It happened back on February 9th about 9 p.m. This was on Coyote Hollow Road. Police say the victim opened the front door. One of the suspects pointed a gun at him. The victim closed the door. He was able to call police. Witnesses say they heard three gunshots before seeing the suspects drive away in a silver Mercedes Benz. If you have information that can lead to an arrest in this case, call Crime Stoppers anytime. 210-224 stop. The stay at home orders for Texas have officially expired and today the state is entering the first phase of Governor Abbott's plan to reopen the economy. But here in San Antonio, City Council voted to extend the stay home work safe order through May 19th. So what does that mean for you? In Bear County gatherings are still prohibited behind, beyond your household and social distancing is still required in shared outdoor spaces and in stores. People who violate the rules risk facing fines and possible jail time. People must also continue to wear face coverings in public. Retail stores, restaurants, movie theaters, malls are allowed to open today as long as they operate at 25% occupancy. But many places are choosing to keep the doors closed. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a closer look at what is open and what is not. We also have more details on the state and the city's reopening plans. You can find all of it on ksat.com slash coronavirus. Any morning headlines, quote, this never happened, end quote. That's what Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden said earlier today regarding the sexual assault allegation against him. The allegation comes from Biden's former Senate staffer, Tara Reid, who says he assaulted her in the basement of a Capitol Hill office building back in the 90s. His campaign issued a statement in early April denying the allegations. And speaking publicly for the first time this morning on MSNBC, Biden said the accusation is not true. The former vice president says he will ask the National Archives to determine whether there is any record of such a complaint being filed. Strong wind took a pair of window washers in Miami on a wild ride yesterday afternoon. Their scaffolding was caught on camera dangerously swaying against a building along the Sunny Isles Beach. Look at this. Wind wow. gusts as high as almost 50 miles an hour felt across parts of South Florida along with heavy rainfall. Workers are on the side of the building where they could not see the storms coming. Their co-workers eventually were able to help them climb into a balcony. No one was hurt. That is scary. And finally, take a look at this incredible drone light show put on above the skies of Philadelphia to honor medical workers. Verge Aero programmed and performed the amazing display using 136 drones flying some 400 feet above hospitals near the University of Pennsylvania. Unbelievable. Images of hope, thanks, and love shining bright in the night sky as medical workers and first responders soaked up the sky-high salute. Companies said they wanted to offer their resources to stand in solidarity with those fighting the coronavirus, and this show was just for them. And now let's check in with our friends at Cheddar. Hello everyone, this is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar. 
Yet another retailer falling victim to the retail apocalypse, J. Crew, reportedly preparing for a bankruptcy filing, this according to CNBC. Now, while those plans have not yet been finalized, the retailer is working to secure $400 million in financing all the fund operations in bankruptcy. J. Crew so far has declined to comment. Meanwhile, it took a pandemic, but beer sales are on the rise once again. The beverage, which was falling out of favor with consumers thanks to the rise of spiked seltzers, now seeing a spike of its own in the midst of the pandemic. Sales of 24 and 30 packs grew by 90% at their peak during the third week of March. And today is International Workers' Day, and essential workers across the country demanding change as an unprecedented coalition of workers will walk off the job later today, citing unsafe working conditions. Organizers say workers will either call in sick or stage a walkout during their lunch breaks. Employees from Amazon, Instacart, Whole Foods, Walmart, Target, and more are all going to participate. And it's Chatter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from New York City. I hadn't seen Baker in a while. I know. Good to see Mr. Machado. 908, 69 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Major, Major Spurs, Spurs news. news getting a lot of attention this morning. The team is selling a minority stake in the team, and they've hired Guggenheim Partners to manage the process. RJ Marquez is here to break it all down. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has drafted some new guidelines for businesses to reopen. Seeing as Daryl Forge has joined us live a little bit later in this newscast. All right, checking the stock market. Not a good day. Down 372 points at 23,973. Time now, 12 minutes after 9, the state of Texas beginning its phase one of reopening businesses like restaurants, museums, and malls. In San Antonio, one of the biggest reopening events will take place at the San Antonio Zoo. They are offering a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to experience the zoo from the comfort and safety of your own vehicle. Alicia Beretta live from the San Antonio Zoo this morning with more. Good morning. Well, let me tell you, we hopped into our KSAT unit and then we started making our way through uh, this drive through experience. And it's truly something that's once in a lifetime that you may only be able to experience here. And all this money, these ticket sales go directly to help keep up with the animals here. So these are two of the ones we have Caitlin here with the Florida King Snake. I'm scared of snakes, but it looks beautiful. And then over here we have Sarah with an Eastern Screech Owl. So you may not be able to see these animals during the drive through experience, but these are the little fellas that you get to help. And live with me to tell me more, ladies, thank you so much, is Jennifer Pugh with the San Antonio Zoo. Jennifer, this the animals are excited. We see it behind us. Everybody back and in this new way this also is another great way to help the zoo help the great animals that you just saw we still need help donations just because we are losing money but you know this is another great way for you to help us out and then things will be offered curbside so we've seen it they can enjoy it from the comfort of their car they do not need to get out no yeah so you can place your order for some yummy snacks um, and we'll bring it right to your car so you don't have to get out. We do have pit stops along the way if you do have a little one that has an emergency. But we still ask you to wear your mask, safely get out of your vehicle, and maintain distancing. And then tickets, last one, are still available. Yes, just because it's sold out, if you are an annual pass holder or a monthly pass holder, we still have tickets for you. Just come on up, bring your ID so that way we can see that you are one of our annual pass holders. And we have dates in until May 17th. Jennifer, thank you so much. And you guys, this is one of the exhibits that you'll be able to see. We're trying to, I want to see if you can see the gibbons up there. These are some of the guys that really miss the interaction with the kids. And Jennifer talked about it, the oohs and ahs. So they'll be hearing a lot of that starting at 10 a.m. this morning. And we'll stick around here at the San Antonio Zoo. So you can expect us to be back here the next half hour. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, back to you. What a beautiful weather for it today, too. Yeah. Thank, thank you, yes, Alicia. Yes, it's thank beautiful. You. It feels great out here. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Well, they couldn't have picked a better weekend to start that. And then tomorrow, we you know, the humidity and heat will return, but you'll be in your car, so you can have your air conditioning on. Perfect. Justin? Works out well, yeah. Uh, the heat will be cranking up this weekend. We'll get uh, some 90s, actually some mid-90s back in the forecast. I want to talk a little bit about uh, severe weather, though. We haven't had a big severe weather season so far, so let's take a look at the numbers. Now that we're through April, the Texas total for severe uh, weather reports, and these are preliminary, 554. We've seen 64 tornadoes in the state of Texas, 231 hail reports, and 259 wind reports. 
uh, that's about on par with what we were looking at last year. And then as we look at the U.S. totals, we're at 5,625. Alabama leads the way with the most severe weather reports at 563. Texas is right behind them at 554. And then Georgia checks in at 489. We've still got a ways to go here with our severe weather season. We typically see it through May, maybe even early June before we get into that summer lake pattern. Although I'll tell you, as it stands right now, this looks pretty summer like. We've got a ridge building in over the west and then trough here in the east. But as we get uh, into next week, everything really flattens out. There's no big storm systems coming across the country to really generate a lot of severe weather. So it looks like things are going to be pretty quiet. Those were the high temperatures yesterday, by the way. Very hot across the desert southwest and the, uh, even here in Texas. Uh, right now, 69 degrees. Dew point is at 54. We've got southerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. Look for that number to jump up today. We'll see some pretty gusty winds, I think, during the afternoon, and that will drive in uh, more moisture. But we really won't feel that until tomorrow. Satellite pictures giving us the all clear at this point, at least here around Bear County. Temperatures right around 70 degrees, but as we zoom out, you'll notice we've got some thin high clouds out west. Those will be shifting in today. Just thin clouds, though, not really going to cause really any issues weather wise. And uh, already starting to see some 70s on the map from Catula up to Carrizo Springs. Wind gusts today, this should start to pick up some. We'll see some gusts up around uh, maybe 20 miles per hour during the afternoon. Uh, not as strong as we were looking at a couple days ago, but uh, just breezy. And you look at the dew points, we're in the mid 50s right now. They'll drop off during the afternoon, but as we get into tomorrow morning, we start to get that moisture surging back in. Dew points are in the 60s, maybe some 70s. That may result in a little bit of morning cloudiness. Shouldn't last too long. And then as we go into Sunday, these numbers get even bigger and higher. The dew points jump up close to 70 in a lot of spots. So it is going to be more sticky uh, by the end of the weekend and certainly into next week. Today is an ozone action day. We want to pass that along. Kiddos are outside. They've got asthma or anything like that. Something to just keep in the back of your mind. Uh, we've got sort of some uh, stagnant air in place and some higher levels of ozone. Futurecast shows that uh, we're going to see some morning clouds tomorrow. That's around 8 o'clock. This computer model generates a little bit off to the west of San Antonio. And then uh, we'll see mostly sunny skies tomorrow afternoon. Sunday, a little bit more morning cloudiness and then mostly sunny skies during the afternoon. We're going to be kind of on repeat here going forward. 90 degrees the high today. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then tomorrow, 93, 94 Sunday. 96 on Monday, one of our hottest days. I think Monday and Tuesday will be our hottest days. We'll have to watch for a storm late on Tuesday as our frontal boundary approaches. And thankfully, that frontal boundary cools us down a little bit on Wednesday. Still with some slight chances of rain, too. A high of 84 on Wednesday with a 20% shot at some showers or storms. Guys? Thank you, Justin. 918, 69 degrees. What was that little kick thing you were just doing over there off camera? I'm not sure. <laughs> Still ahead on GMSA at 9, the coronavirus pandemic didn't stop a local music group from celebrating its fifth anniversary. RJ Marquez will give us a look at their beautiful rendition of Bill Withers' Lean On Me. This morning on KSAT.com, be on the lookout for some creepy crawlers as our temperatures get hotter. Ooh, and the Spurs are making news after reports surface they are selling a small part of the team. RJ Marquez joins us live from his home with the details. Good morning, RJ. Hey, RJ. Yeah, good morning, guys. Happy Friday. Uh, we made it through another week, and hopefully this month uh, is a little bit better than the past few months. But, uh, yeah, let's start there with that Spurs news. This news raised a lot of eyebrows for people. A variety reported yesterday the Spurs are selling a minority stake in the team. The report said it's not clear if one of the current team minority owners or, the group of, or a group of Spurs investors are trying to sell their shares, and if so, how much money is actually at stake here. The Spurs have several minority owners but the team ownership is controlled by the Holt family. It's been that way since the mid-90s, 1996. Peter J. Holt is the current chairman for the Spurs. He sent us a statement in response to the report that said, as an ownership group, we remain 100% committed to the city of San Antonio. Every day we celebrate the amazing relationship that exists between our community, our fans, and our Spurs. San Antonio is home and will remain home, end quote. So some pretty interesting stuff there, guys. Uh, again, this kind of came down a little bit later yesterday afternoon. So a lot of people were wondering just what this kind of meant. Well, well, I'm glad to know they're staying. That's yeah, the most important part. Don't want them going anywhere, do we? 
Yeah, no, definitely not. And uh, it's interesting because R.C. Buford, I was on a uh, video conference call with him that he had with the media yesterday, and uh, he didn't give any indication of any sort of financial issues. He said that all arena staff has been paid through the end of the season, and they haven't had to make any staffing changes as far as furloughs or anything like that. So I think they're in a good they're in good position here. So, But it definitely kind of worried some people yesterday. Wow, well, yeah, Spurs well. are famously tight-lipped about stuff like this. But yes, they're not they are. going are, anywhere. No, no, definitely not. All right, guys, moving on. A story that has gotten a lot of attention on our website. We have a list of some of the most dangerous critters that could be found in South Texas. Yeah, this is scary stuff. These insects and snakes usually show up during spring and summer. These are all kinds of bugs on our list, including flannel moths, which I had to do a little bit of research. Didn't know what that was. Kissing bugs and the Texas red-headed centipede. Thing just kind of sounds scary Ew, to begin what? with. <laughs> yeah, and keep in mind, snake sightings usually increase after rainy weather as well. People have been stuck at home, so they may want to go outside, venture a little bit, but just be careful, everyone. A lot of these bugs hide under wood piles, cracks, dents, and in outdoor sheds. So, uh, you know what? It's weird because we posted this story yesterday. Erica Hernandez did it, and um, it got a lot of traction. I guess people are just really interested in these little types of creepy crawlers. Yeah, somebody we work yeah. with's wife posted yesterday, they went on their walk and they came right across a coral snake, which of course is all sorts of- You don't of, want to be next to a coral snake. No, you really yeah. don't, but uh, they yeah. took a picture from a safe distance. The only place I yeah, want to definitely. see these is on our website. <laughs> there you go, be careful. Okay guys, last story of our morning. Uh, one of the interesting things about this whole quarantine has been the virtual concerts that students have put together. I mean, these kids are doing just amazing jobs. We have a great one this morning. The Roan Forest Elementary School put one together. Let's take a listen. All right, guys. That's so great. here, yeah, it sounds amazing. So here's a little bit of the backstory. 101 current and past performers of the school's music department performed Lean On Me. That, of course, is that classic Bill Withers song and posted the video on their Facebook page. The school's music group was supposed to hold a concert celebrating its fifth anniversary on April 28th. So a couple of days ago, but of course, we're not able to. The video starts with a message that says, despite the concert being canceled, the music will never stop. I absolutely love that message at the beginning of the video. So over the past five years, the Spurs, the group has performed for national audiences Spurs games and even performed for the cast of Stomp. So they've uh, they've performed in so, in front of some uh, pretty uh, big crowds and uh, big events. Good job to those guys. Pretty cool. They had that. We had the mariachi kids from uh, Fox Tech performing the other yeah. day. A lot yeah. of talent. Yeah, a lot of talent. And the way they put this stuff together is amazing. I think that uh, it's really just a testament to the work that these music teachers are still doing with their students, even though they don't have them in their uh, music rooms well, anymore. We're so grateful that they are sharing these things so we can share them as well. And it puts a smile on your face. Yeah, definitely. All right, more on KSAT.com. RJ Marquez, have a great weekend, bud. Bye, All right, RJ. you two guys, bye. Talk at you later. Right now, 926, 69 degrees. More ahead on GMSA at 9. Stay at home. Orders have millions of Americans in need of a haircut. So many people are taking matters into their own hands now. Um, I can relate. A look at some of the hilarious results. Many malls across several states reopening today. So how are they keeping shoppers safe? See it as Daryl Forges standing by live with more. Under pressure to get the economy going again, more than half of the states across the country will be partially reopened by the end of the week. But national health experts worry about an increase in the spread of the coronavirus as a result. Tina Daryl Ford has joined us live from outside Lenox Square Mall there in Atlanta, Georgia. With more Daryl, some malls reopening today. What are procedures to keep people safe who do decide to head out and hit the malls? Yeah, you're right about that, Mark and Leslie. Good morning to the both of you. There are several malls and stores reopening today. Like, for instance, the one behind me, Linux Mall, is one of the biggest malls in the Metro Atlanta area. It was actually set to reopen today, but late last night, the property owners decided to move that on to Monday. That just shows you and gives you an example of how business owners are still trying to figure things out during the coronavirus pandemic. But you just talked about it. Several things when it comes to the guidelines released by the CDC. They've released several things for business owners, daycare centers, schools when it comes to reopening. The one big thing when it comes to restaurants is using disposable menus, 
plastic wear as well as dishes, and also making sure that they're keeping their employees safe by wearing face masks at all times. So throughout this whole situation, they're just trying to make sure that everyone is staying safe during this time. But there's a lot of reopenings, especially in the Lone Star State where you all are, about 25% capacity will be available for certain malls. So moving forward, it's just gonna take baby steps to see exactly what's gonna happen when these businesses reopen moving forward. Well, Daryl, the CDC has uh, drafted some new guidelines for businesses to reopen. What is it suggesting? Well, the biggest thing that throughout the whole entire piece of the guidelines, Leslie, is social distancing. That's the biggest concern right now for uh, health officials is making sure everyone is still practicing social distancing. Right here in Georgia, of course, they lifted uh, the stay at home order as of 11.59 not 59 last night. But just because that's been lifted does not mean that you cannot uh, continue to be in very close quarters with strangers and family and friends. At this point, they still want to stress, stress uh, social distancing because statistics show that there's going to be a surge potentially in the fall of coronavirus cases along with during the flu season. So that is still the big concern right now for health officials is making sure people are continuing to practice social distancing, especially when they go to malls right behind me. So that's the biggest hope moving forward, Leslie and Mark. Uh, Daryl, you already touched on the malls reopening here in Texas. What are you hearing about the availability of testing in places like Texas as we start to open things back up? Yeah, Mark, we've been talking about this. I feel like whenever I go on air with you all every single day, the biggest concern back and forth between federal officials as well as state and local officials is testing, testing kits, test supplies. Um, it's been a lot of miscommunication uh, amongst the different levels. Uh, but the biggest thing is, according to Governor Abbott, they've increased testing there by 25,000. And he believes that they are ready to reopen today with the capacity that's happening later on today with malls and restaurants and things like that. But according to health officials in the state of Texas, they believe that is just not the case, and that the state is not ready for reopening. And they still need to expand testing as well as do some more when it comes to the contact tracing program. So when it comes to Governor Abbott as well as uh, uh, health officials, there is a mix there, but ready or not, Mark and Leslie, re reopening is still happening today. It certainly is. Daryl Forge is live for us this morning. Thank you so much and stay healthy. Have a good weekend, Daryl. Back here at home, let's go outside with live cam. Another beautiful morning and we're already up near 70 degrees. Yeah, temperatures are going to jump up quick, just like they did yesterday. We did get up close to 90 yesterday afternoon. That's just about where we'll be today. Maybe a degree or two warmer. Everything's blooming. It's been warm and uh, we've got some great pictures coming in on our case at connect. This is another good one. Uh, it says uh, love spring. All begins to bloom again. Indeed it does. And there's some really nice colors out there uh, right now. We could use a little bit of rain though. I'll tell you that. And there is not a whole lot in the forecast. You look at high temperatures today. Awful warm across the state of Texas. There will be some triple digits out west. Places like Midland and Lubbock expected to get up into the triple digits. We're looking for 90s here around San Antonio and then some mid to upper 90s for places like Del Rio and Laredo. Forecast for us 82 by noontime, 89 by 3 o'clock, mostly sunny and warm. Still some low humidity today and we'll get some breezy winds, but that humidity level increases tomorrow. We have more on the weekend forecast and we have a junior meteorologist coming up here in just a bit, guys. Thank you, sir. And we're looking at uh, a stalled vehicle out there, 10 and ProBamp, but it's uh, right there in the median between the ramp and the main lanes. Driving around, you may see bears, a rainforest, tigers, and more. That's if you're cruising through the San Antonio Zoo, of course. Begin begin beginning this morning, guests will be able to drive through the zoo for a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Tickets are already sold out for this weekend, but we understand new dates have been added. Our Alicia Barrera is live from the San Antonio Zoo with more on this tour on four wheels. What a great idea. This is an awesome idea, isn't it? And the, the dates have been added up until May 17th, so this is a big deal for the San Antonio Zoo. And people are going to start trickling in starting at 10 a.m., so we're not too far from that opening. With me live, I have CEO of the San Antonio Zoo. Tim, good morning. Good morning. This is a big deal for you and your staff. More ticket sales, and that means possibly more employees? Right, this is really exciting for us. You know, we're still closed due to the pandemic. People can't just come and walk around the zoo in the traditional sense. So this drive-through experience is something that guests can experience and see the zoo while we're closed. 
and uh, it's become so popular so fast that it's allowed us to bring some of our furloughed employees back sooner than we expected. And then we get to see fellows like the bears over here. What yeah, is this, the spectacle he's, he's bear? His, he's playing with his toys. <laughs> he's having a good time. And this money, so it obviously goes back to the employees, and then it's going back to the animals here, although you won't be able to see these fellows right here. We're talking about the Florida king snake that Caitlin is holding. And then as well as over here, we have another furry friend. His name, I think it's the, e I forgot his name. Twig, Twig. All right, Twig over here. He's the Eastern Screech Owl. And this is this money is helping to feed them and take care of them, and make sure that they're okay. Tim, for you, what are you hoping that the parents and children take away once they're able to drive through and, and see like, you know, this beautiful bear over here? Sure, we're excited that people are getting back out, connecting with nature, learning about our animals. There's an audio tour that guests will have the ability to listen to as they tour through the zoo. And um, so they get to see lots of animals at the zoo and do things that's never happened before in the history of the zoo or any zoo in the world that we know of. Again, that starts at 10 a.m. today. Tim, thank you so much for thank being you. with us this morning. Morning. And we are actually going to be able to stick by here and hopefully get some more video to have that full story for you at noon just to show you exactly how this is going to work out. But it's a beautiful day to come out here. Reporting live from the San Antonio Zoo, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. Thank you, Alicia. What a great assignment today. No kidding. It's a beautiful day to be outside and she'll have more at noon. I understand it was so popular. The price is actually going up, too. I think it was $40 a, a car. No, 60. Now going up to 60. Almost yeah. double. I know. So, OK, well, pandemic times. We have gotten used to a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. We have. Merriam Webster said because of all of the new things we've gotten used to, they have uh, added new coronavirus related words. And they did it in record time, probably. <laughs> they sure did. So let's go over some of these. Uh, not really surprising, actually. Physical distancing is one of them. Yeah, um, uh, WFH, which is the acronym from working, working from home. From home. By the way, that just so you know, there's over 535 new words and meanings added because of this. Immune surveillance is another one. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's also epidemic curve and herd immunity. I'm lost. Oh, you are? You lost me. Oh, I'm sorry. oh here we go. Uh, some of the other ones added. Uh, epidemic curve, immune surveillance, herd immunity you just mm -hmm. added, added. And some of these meds that have been talked about lately. Remdesivir, favipara. I can never say that one. It's Favipiravir? That sounds right. Okay. And hydroxychloroquine. Right. It's also been added. Well, they added they added all of these, and they did it in fairly fairly quick time. They said, uh, by the way, a spokesperson for Merriam-Webster said, usually it takes at least several years for new words to become dictionary entries. They must be used by people, uh, many people, in a variety of publications over time. When you first see the WFH, you're like, what? 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 Oh no, work from home. That makes sense. Okay, we we got that. Night 39, 69 degrees. You're watching GMSA at nine. More and more people, including celebrities, are giving themselves and their loved ones haircuts during quarantine. And it's not turning out well. I can relate. After the break, CNN's Jeannie Mose has a hilarious take on Corona cuts. Night 42, welcome back on your Friday morning. Closed salons have folks wanting to pull out their hair. <laughs> As the coronavirus keeps barbershops shuttered, people are taking matters into their own hands. CNN's Jeannie Most reports on do-it-yourself Corona Cuts. Corona Cut. Forget having a bad hair day. It's a bad hair spring. Yes, and I gave myself a Drink. giant bald spot <laughs> over here. Gentlemen and ladies, start your engines. Put on your kid's lion bib, close your eyes so you don't see him coming at you with the scissors. Don't go too high with the razors, okay? Maybe Why are we going so high? Why are you going so high? Even for a neurosurgeon, it's not brain surgery, it's harder. Say hello to uneven ends and a devil horns haircut. Even a long distance dye job or a buzz cut by a stylist in a hazmat suit are technically off limits. It's the age of do-it-yourself hashtag Corona cuts. Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton did it on TV. Please give him a mullet, please. Paying tribute to Jimmy Fallon. I'm literally putting your initials in my head right now, Jimmy. I'm not kidding. Celebrity chef Jamie Oliver posted spiky father-son haircuts with his three-year-old. And it's not just celebs. Jennifer Schonsberg took it all off. This might not be for everybody literally have always been curious what I looked like bald. People say it brings out her eyes. When Star Trek actor Anthony Rapp shaved off all of his hair, fans remarked that the droppings resembled the otherworldly creatures known as tribbles. 
The singer Pink gave herself a drunk cut. When I drink, I get really, really brilliant ideas. I can cut hair. What can I do? Pink did herself, and her eight-year-old daughter helped do dad. The kid says daddy now looks crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Things may seem like they're going downhill, but at least quarantine hair gives brothers an excuse to exchange digs. You look like you've been cutting your own hair. Corona cuts, not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Genie Mouse, CNN. It was so liberating. I loved, I can't stop touching my head. New York. I was about to say oh, that Gwen gosh. was doing a pretty good job. Stephen Colbert looks like a troll. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Hopefully y'all were watching our show when I shared my experience cutting my husband's hair. Yes. Uh, he has a big bald spot right here. I, I kind of messed that up. Last night, he was like, it's too thick back here. I just can't take it. So round two is coming up tomorrow. I'm going to attempt to make it better in the back for him. Uh, God, God bless. I know. Uh, good luck with it's that. It's really fun. Nothing, Just, nothing. How are you dealing with the lack of a uh, cut? Well, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I took some scissors out this morning, actually, and cut <laughs> a little bit of my... Did you? Yeah. It, See, I've been trimming around here in the yeah. sideburn. That's easy to do. Uh, but I'm, I'm starting to worry about, you know... All that stuff. This. It looks fine. You look good. Thank you. It, look, it looks just <laughs> fine. So, Leslie, when are you going to allow for the rolls to be reversed and your husband to do your hair? <laughs> that will never happen. <laughs> Why not? Ever. Ever. After your hair doesn't look good. It looks great, but... Yeah, you better watch it, Mister. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, if you're watching, that's what duct tape is for. Hold her down and record it. Whoa. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, well, that would be a good video. It would, it would go wild on YouTube. <laughs> Let's uh, switch gears. I understand uh, you have another junior meteorologist, probably with a full head of hair. Yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, Connor is our junior meteorologist <laughs> today. Take a listen. Good morning. This is Connor from Auburnia. Today is Tuesday, April. 21st, today is going to be warm, but I think it's going to be hot in the afternoon. Today is breezy, partly cloudy, and there's going to be no rain. Bye. Bye. Oh, you're so, have, is it my imagination, or have we gotten several from Lavernia? Uh, no, Lavernia has They're really representing up. in this. Yes, I they are. Yeah. You know what I love about that one? He, yeah. re he reads the weather kind of like we read scripts at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> Uh, true. Tentatively. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, are questioning as we're going? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just questioning, what's happening? Questioning a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. We push through, don't we? <laughs> exactly. Great job, Connor. Uh, we appreciate it. And Connor, by the way, is in the first grade. Great work, Shoot. my friend. Okay, let's talk about running, running forecasts. A lot of people are getting out and running these days. Uh, listen, this is just my opinion, uh, but uh, it looks pretty good through about noontime. Humidity stays pretty low, right? We've got temperatures at about 80, but as you get into the afternoon, yeah, it gets a little more hot. Uh, by 3 o'clock, we're going to be closing in on 90 degrees, so maybe not the best time, although I still see plenty of people out running around that time. So it's, it's really your choice, but uh, this is my forecast for it. Uh, meantime, let's go outside for you. We've got clear skies, mostly sunny skies, really. A few thin high clouds there off in the distance. 69 degrees at the airport, 69 Port SA, 66 at Stinson. We've got a southerly wind that right now is fairly light, 5 to 10 miles per hour, but that wind will pick up a little bit today. We also have an ozone action day. We've had a couple of these so far this year. Just This just means the ozone levels are going to be a little elevated today, and folks that uh, deal with asthma have to keep or pay close attention to this, so something to keep in mind uh, this afternoon. Uh, satellite picture shows, again, just a few thin high Sears clouds really off to the west. Temperatures already starting to jump into the 70s in a few spots. 72 Uvalde, 72 Kerrville. There are those clouds I was speaking of, and those will shift through today. But with a little fanfare, they're not going to do much for our forecast. Uh, wind gusts, they should pick up. And so by 4 or 6 o'clock, we're talking about wind gusts up around 20 miles per hour. Uh, not as windy as a couple days ago, but a little bit breezy. And that starts to bring in... The humidity from the Gulf of Mexico dew points right now are in the 50s, so we're still in the pleasant category. A lot of places are, uh, but a few 60s on the map, so it gets a little more muggy as you head off into our eastern counties. And gradually, this moisture is going to increase by tomorrow. That will result in some morning clouds tomorrow morning and probably Sunday morning, too. So the future cast shows that we should get to that morning cloudiness. Now, it's not going to hang around very long. We're going to see mostly sunny skies on your Saturday. Uh, during the afternoon hours and same story on Sunday. Although Sunday, I think the morning cloudiness will be 
a bit more widespread and then uh, hot during the afternoon. Sunday's going to be a hot day. Next week's going to be hot too. 90 degrees today. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then tomorrow we'll start off at 65. So quite a bit warmer than this morning. 93 for a high on Saturday, 94 Sunday, 96 Monday. We're gradually stepping up here. Tuesday is probably one of our warmest days, but we could see a stray shower or storm late in the day. It's a low chance. And then another slight chance on Wednesday after a front comes through and thankfully cools us down. All right, we'll be right back. This weekend's live streaming entertainment includes a massive 24 hour event featuring more than 200 personalities. Plus a smaller one geared specifically, specifically if I could say it, support to people who pour our, our drinks. <laughs> Ironic. <laughs> as seen as Rick Damagella has more. It's a 24 hour live stream to support you. The call to unite will feature performances, lessons, conversations, and more from over 200 artists, entertainers, and leaders supporting anyone and everyone during the pandemic. Oprah Winfrey, Josh Groban, Julia Roberts, Quincy Jones, and Jennifer Garner are among the more than 200 names taking part in the event. The call to unite starts Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern at unite.us. Yo, what up? It's G Love here with a little bit of Philly love. The city of brotherly love gives back. G Love, John Oates, and Kurt Vile lead the lineup of musicians playing the Love from Philly Virtual Music Festival, supporting Philadelphia's artists and entertainment professionals affected by the pandemic. The three day event kicks off Friday at noon Eastern at lovefromphilly.live. I ain't had much else going on, so I sat down and wrote this song. Miss my Support your local bartender. Country artist Luke Combs and Miller Lite are putting on a performance to benefit American bartenders. Viewers can show their support through the hashtag virtual tip jar campaign. The show starts at 8 p.m. Friday on Combs' YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram feeds. Friday also sees the release of Combs' new song titled Six Feet Apart. Streaming in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right. Well, now let's look at the forecast. We're at 74 right now, up to 90 this afternoon. Breezy, mostly sunny. Some morning clouds next few days. Temperatures will be hot. Maybe a slight chance of rain by Tuesday into Wednesday. Well, you have uh, about two and a half million dollars lying around. We, you can buy a piece of the moon. It went on sale yesterday at Christie's Auction House in London, England. It's a moon rock weighing over 29 pounds. Probably struck off the surface of the moon by a collision with an asteroid or comet and then showered down on the Sahara Desert. What's funny is I think it looks like a piece of asphalt to me. But anyway, it's known <laughs> as NWA 12691. It's thought to be the fifth largest piece of moon ever found on Earth. There are only about 1,400 pounds worth of moon rock known to be on planet Earth. That is so cool. I wish I could. They say that um, the origin... The scientists can be certain of its origin because they can compare it with rock samples brought back, of course, by the Apollo space mission. Mm -hmm. It's an actual piece of moon about the size of a football, a bit more oblong than that, larger than your head. They say that meteorites are incredibly rare and only about one in a thousand will come from the moon. That makes it a very special Ooh hard object to find. That's right. Like many that are discovered, it was found in the Sahara Desert by an anonymous finder after traveling some 240,000 miles to Earth from the moon. Two and a half million uh. bucks to own a piece of the moon. Have a great weekend, everybody.